they were all done from explosions, explosive devices, mines, and placed in the ground. Now, to were they, you, could you were blow they, us up? Were they on their remains of the men? Were Sometimes, I, I, but I had times where we all we had was boots. That's it. Yeah, laced up boots with feet in them. And the only reason you could tell who it was is we put the dog tags in the bottom lace. Mm -hmm. You know how your shoe is, is got the bottom lace there? Mm -hmm. You would put the tag in there, insert it up, put a piece of black tape over it, and then just lace it all in within the laces. And that's how they under, you know, how they found the people. I have a friend that lost both legs and one arm. Oh. I'm a mine. And he was driving a vehicle and it went off underneath the left track, which blew up through the driver's hatch area and took out the engine compartment and stuff. And with him, it was just jellified, no bone structure to him at all. Mm. And you put a belt on one limb, a belt on another limb. Why, did you limb. have to help this man? Or? Oh, heck yeah. We were the only individuals on the ground other than a, a medic that was assigned to the 35, 40 people on 5, 6, 8, 10 vehicles that were in a platoon. I had to pull him out of a driver's hatch. And this was a guy we had jelly from about here so all he the still, way down. He still had his arm, but it was just all it's, nothing. It was nothing. It had no bone structure in it at all. Oh, he had good. nothing below one knee, and the other one was just above the knee. And the last time I seen him was, oh, probably 78, 79. It was in Chicago when he was at the VA hospital up there. Mm -hmm. so I stopped and seen him. But after that, I never did it again because he was he was mad. He was mad. Yeah. Well, what quality of life you have? Yeah, if you only got one arm. Yeah. You got one arm. He, he can work a wheelchair. Yeah. He didn't have any family. Uh, he was 19, I think, at one time. At, at the time that he got injured, he didn't have anything from the hips down. You know, he, all he had was his pelvic bone. And there was no, no legs. And this arm was gone completely. He still had one arm. His arm was, he said he had an arm on him like this, but that was his that own was arm. arm. But he could pick himself up and move himself all the way around. I mean, he was all over the bed when I was talking to him. <laughs> you know, he just couldn't stay in one spot. He'd pick up his arm, had a little cage, pick himself up, pull himself over, and set himself back down. He, but he says, I've been in and out of these hospitals, they've been cutting on me for the last 20 years. And he said, why don't you let me die? Well, how do you, how do you come up with an action like that? You know? yeah. But then you, you got to think about what, what kind of quality of life has he got. You know, he's five times more suffering you know, every time he goes through all this stuff. And the surgical procedures and trying to get things to work. And, you know, mm. it, it only works so long, you know, and your your body wears out to that point, then they got to cut into a new nerve or get into a, a cleaner section of the leg, and it's it's crazy. I, I got around. I've been shot at more times than I can think of, but I got one round that went oh, through so. a, a half inch flak jacket. But I had a flak jacket on and a, and a t shirt, and went through the flak jacket, lodged in between my ribs, but it ricocheted down the side of the 50 caliber and lodged into my ribs. When well, I pulled your... my flak jacket out, I burnt these three fingers pulling that bullet because it wasn't fully all the way into me. So it just you saw it, it was right there and you just took it and pulled it out. Well, I didn't pull it out. I burned my fingers so badly <laughs> pulling it out that I dropped it. But when, once I got it out, it quit burning, you know, because those things burn for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. It takes now, a long time your... for hot metal to cool down. What was the feeling like when you got that shot? What were you like? I couldn't breathe. It threw me back in the cupola. It was cold and rainy. It was maybe 75 degrees. So I had on a flak jacket and long sleeve fatigue shirt. And it was just chilly and cool, mm -hmm. you know. But later in the day, that was early in the morning, and I took the re, re shot down. So you were fine, you weren't like out of action after that? No, the no, I, I never had any time out of the field, even when we were blown up. Uh, uh, the rocket propelled grenade that we took through to the side. Did it go I all was, the way through? No, it went right into the driver's hatch, cut the driver off. There was nothing, well, 
Oh, it cut his hand, arm off? Cut him in off. Half. There, was, there was no, we, there was nothing. So was that was that was one of the twenty-seven? Yeah. No. Well, a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. But uh, he actually was. I was talking to him on the radio, and I was telling him, "Got to stay on track. Got to stay on track." Because he was, he was new in country, and it was kind of hard to keep him, keep so the vehicle in line, the vehicles in front of you. 